welcome to Oshkosh's EAA. Enjoy the videos and subscribe. It is designed to be used on small to medium sized airports that have a Unicom and no AWOS. Um, it is designed specifically to operate on the CTAF frequency. And because it operates on the CTAF frequency, a really important design consideration is that the unit is intelligent about when it says things and when it doesn't. So I like to tell people that it's like a smart Unicom operator that knows when to speak and when to shut up. <laughs> and the shut up is a really important part of the system. And so, so I'm going to go ahead and start the demonstration and we're going to use the, the name of our airport as, as, the, uh, as, as the demonstration airport. And I'm flying my Mooney into Potomac Airfield and I have no idea that this thing exists on the field. Okay. So I may start off this whole thing with a, with a radio call that sounds like this. Potomac traffic, Mooney 201 Hotel Bravo, 20 South. Landing, request advisories. Now the system is listening on frequency and trying to decide if anyone will answer. Airfield automated advisory. Wind calm altimeter three zero zero seven. Density altitude one thousand change hundred. Preferred calm wind runway zero six right. Traffic pilot's discretion. For further services, click your mic three times for an advisory. Four times for radio check. All right. So what was happening here? is that the system had been listening on frequencies and it knows the characteristics of a standard call for airport advisories. It recognized that, then it listened to see if anyone responded to that call for, ra for advisories. When it recognized no one answers, then it answered. It provided the advisory and then it provided the user with instructions on how to use the system. So it said, for advisories, click your microphone three times. For radio check, click your microphone four times. If the traffic, if the frequency had been very busy, it would have simply come up on frequency and said, for traffic advi for advisories, click your mic three times, radio check four times. And what it's asking the pilot to do is wait until the frequency is clear and then ask again. And so now I'm going to ask again. Oops. I, don't, I, I didn't have this on. There we go. Now I ask. Potomac Airfield Automated Advisory. Wind calm. Altimeter 3007. Density altitude 1800. For runway, listen for traffic. Now I'm going to do it again for a different reason. Potomac Airfield Extended Advisory. Wind calm. Visibility better than 10 miles. Temperature 262.15. Altimeter 3007. Density altitude 1800. For runway, listen for traffic. All right, notice the difference in the two transmissions. In the first transmission, the system simply gave the pilot the most important information. In the second transmission, the pilot asked for the entire advisory that the system has on board. Notice in the first transmission, included only wind, altimeter, and in this case, density altitude. This morning when it was cool, it was not including density altitude. Notice in the second transmission that included temperature, dew point, and visibility. Um, our visibility sensor is detecting unlimited visibility, and so we need not report visibility, nor do we need to report temperature and dew point. We also have a sky sensor, which is not reporting right now because we're not seeing the sky, and so for obvious reasons. Um, so the point of the system is that it, it responds intelligently to requests. Now, if there had been some wind of any significance, several things would have happened differently. Number one, the system might have recommended a different runway. And uh, number two, if the winds were very gusty and very variable, it might have warned the pilot that there's a possibility of wind shear. Or if there was a crosswind, it might have warned the pilot of the possibility of a crosswind. Another thing that the system will do is, uh, in this case, we are reporting calm winds. The unit suggested that I use runway six as our suggested calm wind runway. Let's say that I'm, on, I'm lining up for runway six and the system recognizes that there's been a wind change. And so it's now realizes that the winds is 240 at 12. So it will come up on its own and it'll say updated wind 240 degrees at 10. 
So the system now asked, now told me I need to change runways. So it came up and did that totally on its own. Now other things that we could have done, uh, for example, if I were at an airport where I was doing snow plowing, the, uh, the operator of the airport using a click pattern very different from this will click in and say a NOTAM such as Potomac traffic, it be advised snow plowing operations uh, Thursday, July 21st uh, until 1800 Zulu. And then that would then be added to the advisories that are normally given to the pilots. So those advisories can consist of anything that happens to be relevant at that particular airport. Another feature that people find very useful is the uh, radio control, radio uh, check. Transmit radio check. 201 Hotel Bravo radio check. 201 Hotel Bravo radio check. Now notice two, notice two things happened here. Number one, it reflected my transmission back to me, telling me that I'm transmitting, that I am keying my microphone, that my radio volumes are set, so I got a round trip radio check. It also gave me the relative power of my uh, transmitter. Now it was reporting power one of 10 because in the building we have our antenna disconnected. Normally, it would report power 10 of 10, power 9 of 10, power 8 of 10, etc. It also has the ability, it, it also, uh, in the way it responds, will tell pilots whether, there's, whether or not there's anyone in a traffic pattern. So it provides those kinds of advisories. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the system is, has a, the second major design parameter of the system is that it's easy to maintain. It essentially requires no maintenance. This uh, installs in less than one day. Uh, after it's installed, it's all the all the parameters are self-monitored. All of the uh, calibrations are done automatically. Any maintenance action is embedded into the system software, and a person talks you through the maintenance actions. Um, the system, uh, uh, the the mast is collapsible. One person can guide the mast down and lower it to a horizontal position where the sensors can either be cleaned or they can be serviced in some other way. Uh, there's about a hundred of these units worldwide and uh, our maintenance history on them has been excellent. Uh, they require very, very little maintenance. Uh, one of the advantages of this system is that it can be unbolted and moved to a different airport. Okay. Uh, all of our systems are monitored 24-7. Uh, all of our worldwide systems are mon monitored 24-7 uh, at our facility in, in Maryland. We have a satellite uplink. You see the satellite antenna up there. Now that provides all the system parameters, uh, the system health. Uh, David Wartofsky, who invented this, can monitor any problems that might exist in the field and usually diagnose and repair those problems can upload software and things like that through the satellite link. We also provide a wireless RF link to a, a, a modem in an FBO shop so the system can be, can be connected to the internet. Pilots can then access the system data in their homes so that they would know before they left if there were conditions at the airport uh, that might require that they, uh, they stay at home. That's particularly important in airports and mountainous areas where there may be late burning off mountain uh, fog or airports that have tricky winds and there are some places where uh, you really don't want to go to those airports when the winds are in certain directions. And so, um, so we're able to provide that remote monitoring. The system comes in a several configurations. What we have here is a solar configuration. Um, this is typically used in applications where the, uh, th there is no proximity to ground power or line power. When line power is available, uh, you can plug it directly into line power. On the solar cells, we recommend that people put four deep cycle batteries in it. That'll power the system for about two weeks. The system requires 18 watts of quiescent power, so it uses very, very little power. It's very, very stingy. We turn off our, our status lights after about 20 minutes, you can see that normally if someone is operating the system, the satellite lights are on, they come off in order to save power. So it's very, very power efficient. 
and they can operate for a long time on a battery. We also suggest that operators put at least one battery in the unit, even if it's AC powered, so that it can run for a long time. Now I'd like to introduce Mr. David Wartowski. David is the brainchild, so 20 years ago, David was trying to get into an airport that had uh, no reporting system and it was very dark, it was in the Washington DC area. Uh, flying in in a Skymaster on a 2100 foot runway, he said, you know, there's got to be a better way. And, and he spent 20 years developing the system. This is the third generation of the system. Uh, it's now quite matured. He's worked through all of the various regulatory hurdles. This, requ this system requires no certification. Basically, you dig a hole, you pour some concrete in the hole, you stick the stake in the ground, and you walk away, and you're done. Uh, and in terms of, of uh, obtaining more information, uh, more questions about the system. The product name is Micro Tower. And you can find it on Potomac-Aviation.com. Great, great, great. And if you call David Warkowski for questions, make sure that you have at least an hour or two, because he's a very taciturn individual. And uh, <laughs> so now it's time to stand up, move forward, and get ready. The show is about to begin, ladies and gentlemen. I present to you the most feared aircraft in the world today. Your United States Air Force's F-22 Raptor!